My name is Mary Hester. I work for SurfNet. I'm a community manager for research. And I worked on the Enlightening Research Global programs actually before I started working for SurfNet. So I've had some experience with um, those collaborations and they're really uh, a team building exercise and they build interdisciplinary teams with researchers and ICT, those doing computing and uh, data services. So what is Enlighten Your Research? Enlighten Your Research is a proposal-based program um, where we, for data compute and uh, network resources, we use it as a tool and a mechanism to reach out to the research collaborations in Europe or globally, depending on the scope of the program. There are a couple of different varieties that we have. Uh, the EAP country, um, Enlighten Your Research is one example of a regionally run program, and we also run programs for Enlighten Your Research nationally in the Netherlands and also globally. So how does it benefit researchers? So it, I said this before, it's a, um, it builds interdisciplinary teams, and we help build faster workflows for these research collaborations, and we're fixing issues that researchers often deal with. So one example is poor throughput at your campus, or the fact that the servers are always full of capacity and uh, sometimes they need a little bit of help to architect new solutions. So Enlighten Your Research actually started in 2007 to promote light path services, which at the time were static point-to-point -point, uh, connections. Over time, it evolved into a program where we had the interdisciplinary skills that were required by researchers to make use of the ICT services. In 2016, uh, Maria and my colleague Sylvia Kuypers launched the EAP, the Enlighten Your Research at EAP, which stimulated the use of the technologies in the regions. Uh, we had two winners from 2016. One was collaborating, uh, collaboration between Belarus and Korea, and the second was between Armenia and Germany. And so we would like to go ahead and do the announcements for our 2017 winners now. And I'm going to invite my lovely assistant, Eric Hauser, to join me. So our first winning proposal is for Tigran. Zargan for online Armenian digital library for research based on e-infrastructure facilities for the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia. And we'd like to invite you to say a couple of words about your project. So, uh, I am representing, I'm director of a national library of Armenia. And as a national librarian, just coordinating all activities and inside Armenia for libraries and outside, because Armenian written heritage is spread all over the world. We are having a lot of armenological centers, especially in Europe, in US. So we are trying just to gather to understand where, what, when is uh, published or print. So, just some facts. Uh, Armenian Yal Libraries Union catalog is in use. Uh, more than two and four million digitized pages we are having in our union catalog. Uh, Armenian book and Armenian periodicals also are being developed and Uh, also, in our republic, we are having uh, very huge computational resources. And uh, just our keynotes are interconnected at 10 gigabit per second uh, broadband channel. All our libraries, main libraries, university, academic, and public, are connected to our academic uh, network, and we are happy for that. We are having external connectivity to Giant, and uh, also ARM Grid is 
functioning in the Republic, so uh, it's time to start to develop uh, big data, to analyze those data which are preserved in our libraries, especially in the national libraries. So what we want to achieve uh, through this project? Development of a digital library for academic papers within the federated cloud platform for efficient use of research papers produced in our republic during these past 70 years. And of course here we will collaborate two libraries, National Library and Fundamental Scientific Library of the Academy of Sciences will be main contributors for the project. Uh, to solve such a complex task, uh, we need a high performance computing and large volumes of data. And um, during past, let's say, one and a half or two years, we are in search for a good software. Actually, all, soft all software which we are using in our libraries is open source. All data digitized is in an open access domain. And in a search of such a software which will satisfy this our requirements, we, and, uh, we stop our decision on Delibra, which is being developed or already is developed in the Poznan Supercomputing Center. Uh, we piloted that, we tested. For us, it's very important to have a multilingual support for authority records, authority control, or, and for subject headings. This uh, program is very flexible, very good supporting. So I hope that we will be successful. And I hope that after one year, if we will have a, a possibility to meet each other, I will be able to report about some results, some achievements, some outcomes of such a project. And as a first uh, phase uh, for our digital library, we are planning to develop a bibliographic database with, uh, of our Institute for Informatics and Automation Problems, their proceedings, the journal articles for last 10 years. And after that, we will go forward. So this much, thank you. Okay, and our next awarded project is for open data, open government data adoption, a multi-level framework for data sharing and utilization in EAP countries. So Iqbal from the University of Utrecht, and he is actually from Azerbaijan, so we have a great um, multinational collaboration. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, the uh, above presentation of Peter was very good starting point of my uh, research area, and therefore I will not be uh, I will not go too deeper that uh, Peter already presented. Uh, open science data is uh, quite a relevant field of open government data, but open science data is generated by scientists and open government data is generated by governments. Uh, with the mind, uh, the mind of uh, uh, Silicon Valley, now governments invest huge amount of data to build uh, technoparks. Uh, but why they develop these technoparks? Because they want to see new apples, Facebook in their own country, that kind of innovative uh, companies. And uh, we know that Apple don't invest and don't generate new technologies by themselves. But uh, those technologies that are used by Apple or other those kind of uh, companies are, uh, come from the research and development institutes of governments. Those projects and those innovations were funded by governments. So this is money. This money is not only source. Uh, from government that uh, we can facilitate our society, we can facilitate our science and get more innovations and eventually get development. But the most important part is information, most important part is data. 
and uh, government is the only and the most significant institution that our society that collect all kind of data sets, all kind of uh, information about our day-to-day -day activities. So governments collect huge amount of data set. Each single data set can be a source for social research, can be source for understanding social problems, can be source for understanding or building social entrepreneurs that uh, uh, discussed today also. Our last research analyzed uh, about a hundred and even more uh, studies of uh, open data. This is meta-analysis and we uh, revealed that there are four main pillars of open data, open government data environment. Uh, how we can use it, the types of usage, how we can get effects and uh, in which conditions which we can get uh, open data effects and who will use it. You see, it's very, very comprehensive environment that there are many uh, participants and stakeholders in this process. Even journalists are there, we can get economic effects, we can get good governance effects. Uh, if you are interested in the uh, citation references there, so you can check uh, more details of uh, this research. But based on this understanding that it is quite complex, so we can't, it's not a uh, drag and drop uh, process. If you publish it, you will not get economic results, you will not get good governance. You need to understand you need to implement first open data adoption process. It's not a simultaneous process. And you need to understand open data ecosystem. All stakeholders should be there because there are many technical aspects of uh, data that should be uh, in place like standards. If we can't talk about uh, same language, we can't use data in a good manner that we, we know today the, uh, the most open government is the UK. They opened 40,000 government data sets, but majority of them are not used because the ecosystem is not there. New coming countries like Eastern Partnership countries have advantage that they can learn their mistakes and they can implement better and more sophisticated uh, ecosystem and uh, they can understand influential factors with the communication of stakeholders and then we can get results. And our research is uh, targeted to reveal that environment, that picture, the big picture, and uh, build a solution for uh, Eastern partnership countries that they can use same data from different countries and understand, let's say, education of those countries, compare them, uh, understand some evidence of policies that brought better results. Then we can compare those countries and we can learn from each other based on data. Why Google develops very fast, very quick, because they have advantage to collect data, but much important, they have advantage to learn from data. But governments don't learn data. They just collect it as an operational basis, day-to-day -day activities, but they don't learn it from the collected data. And the last, we know that uh, we can uh, get better results from open data. We can implement open data by using uh, bright minds and we can uh, implement data for 